so hey, let's take a look at the Raxial bot. What do you guys think? The, the thing about the Rax, Raxial bot is that it's not a robot. As you know, uh, this is man. This is basically a manual, a manually controlled robot. It's that's why I call it a bot. It's not actually a robot. No automation. Um, if there's a way to trigger sequences through the BUIs, that would be amazing because I would love to see this thing have some personality on its own without me controlling it. So here's the Raxial bot. Um, it's pretty solid. It um, has quite a presence when you see it. There it is. It has uh, 21 motors. There's 20 shock absorbers. There are power functions and control plus motors. The whole idea was just to give it this sort of wheel-toed quad thing. We have the wheels at the feet. So they're solid. These are solid wheels. And it'll support the weight better. Are those from... Mm -hmm. uh... And uh, from our uh, education mm -hmm. wheels, I think they are like a spike prime type of wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are two of them, right? The big, maybe, the medium maybe, ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe Ninjago as well. I know that there's a series of these. There's ones like with like a blue rubber and like a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the ones. Yeah. So I have these. Um, at first, the wheels were just a single wheel, just one wheel. Um, and I was definitely noticing some stability issues as I was starting to put the, the chassis together. Um, I decided to double up on it. I also melted a lot of worm gears trying to directly mm -hmm. drive these with worm gears. <laughs> melted them real, real fast. Um, so I switched. Yeah. And then back here is uh, like a thumb wheel. This is a smooth wheel so that when the legs actually twist to steer with the steering components inside there um this won't provide any friction and it'll actually glide so it keeps it from hanging up so this is a smooth no rubber um reminds me of this, those old of those mm -hmm. old wheels are available smooth ones in the old sets i think the racers had them i think mm -hmm. it's that one yeah yes yeah, I believe that's where I got these from. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it helps for drifting and stuff like that. Um, then there's a very simple gear train going. There's some knob gears here. The knob gears are transmitting to, um, I think it's, what is it, 8, no, um, 12 and 20 tooth gear. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to this 36. So these are so freewheel. You, you get three times gearing down? Mm-hmm. Yep, three times gearing down, and there's it's freewheel because there's no worm gear or anything to hold the weight. So it mm -hmm. kind of forms a tripod or a little patch that right in the center is kind of where the weight is wanting to go. So it's quite fast then, three times down. That's quite it, it is. It is. Um, I've gotten it to drive about a foot or two before I start getting nervous, and then I'm like, <laughs> then I let off the controls and I try try to catch it. Um, but I've gotten it to move. I haven't gotten it to drive around and steer like an actual car. Um, that's something that I would like to learn to do or at least try to train the robot to do it in a way that it's going to keep it from falling down. For a while, I decided whether or not I was going to proceed with these shoulders, and I was just going to do a whole different setup. Um, but they just look so cool, and it gave it a nice a nice airy sort of light spindly look i guess and i decided why not let's just try it but inside of here are linear actuators that's one of the motors that drives the linear actuator and <clears throat> linear actuator is laying on its side and it's basically pushing that control arm piece you know to raise and lower the shoulder oh, it's like the f1 suspension it is and then there's a yellow hard shock opposite of it after I built the head and after I built the legs, I started directly working on the suspension components. So it's pretty early in the process. 
And how do you design your models? Do you like uh, use any, you just build or do you use any di digital tools? Well, I don't, I don't do any digital designing. Um, I uh -huh. can, and I have, but uh, basically I'm just messing around with the, with the, with the parts that I like the best, you know, sort of a seed part, looking for something that would help to uh, give me some inspiration. So I think with this one, I'm, you know, it was just thinking about all of the, the components that you guys have, you know, looking at the, the motors, looking at, you know, the 3.0. That's really what got me to start working on this one. And um, it's just a lot of trial and error. And I've done this kind of robot building before. Um, but it's not digital design. So right now I just have the head connected. Um how many boobies bricks do you have in there? So the legs each have one. So there's the the two point mm -hmm, oh. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it rides behind the leg. Uh, I actually built the legs reversed uh in the back at one point. More more like this kind of like a leg, you know, like more like an mm -hmm. animal type of leg. Yeah, yeah. Um but more the more that I studied modern quads, they all have the same type of leg on all four limbs. Most of them, most of them, the most advanced ones. So I decided to keep the legs the same. And, but there's your, each one of them has its own buoys. And then there is a 3.0 under the hatch here. And that's inside there. Mm -hmm. So that one is driving the steering for the front and back. And it's driving the center section linear actuators. So and it can also, also pivot in the center? Yes. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. It arch its and... back. Yes, it can arch its back. And there's some really cool parts in there. The Technic, like a small, like a circle pieces. Like, um... Are those the small uh, uh, from the AT-80, the small arachs? Yeah. They're like okay. they're small. Yeah, yeah, the, the right, small ones, the ones we use for the skateboard. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. right for the skateboard wheels. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you're using so, those as a big the bearing as the center pivot. Yeah, it actually yeah, yeah. everything pivots around there. And then there are two uh, Technic turntables that fit directly inside there, inside that the ring. Small ones. Right, or, and then yeah, there's them, another. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So inside the teeth. Oop, I can't mm -hmm. see. Inside the teeth, there is one back there. There's a pair of Technic turntables. So at the center, it can bend like that. Nice. Um, so there's the linear actuators. And I just kind of have a short throw, as you know, because they're so small. But it's enough to get it to move. And there's a Technic turntable. Uh, I see like what a... you did there. I see what you yeah. did there. You're using the two of them and then combine like a differential so you can move to Correct. tilt and steer the head, right? Right. So it's pulling and wow, pushing. Brilliant. And and then basically, there's a small Technic turntable right there in the very center. You can see. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. To, it's hard to notice it. Sorry, but. I totally understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, it's just riding along the gear, and the gear just basically pulls, pulls against the teeth, and that's that. All right. So then. Basically, I have the head clipped together using these little pieces holding that part. And it just lifts up. There's a battery box here. I should probably turn it on. Give some lights. Turn the other battery box on. Are those 9 volt lights? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, those are. Actually, these are, I think, uh, blinky bricks. Ah, aha, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah, blinky bricks and some other. So yeah, there's the the head and the pilot. Um, uh -huh. I guess you can't see too well on that. Sorry about that. Put that back. There. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> it's the the little details like that. Yeah. Shows you're really you're... A, a, you are really a perfectionist. Thank you. Yeah, this one is uh. I love this. Oh, I love the head of it. One. 
and there's a lot of like uh, other things in there that you can barely see. So when you you look at it in person, you're like, oh. So in a way, I like to build it thinking that other Lego builders would, you know, stuff that they would appreciate. So whenever I lose a piece and it goes down into the neck, it's it's really bad. <laughs> I have to actually pick up the whole robot and flip it upside down and shake it out. And that's happened. For sure. Now these dinosaur pieces oh, can be yeah. used. They, they can be used as props to hold the head up. Uh -huh. um, oh, yeah, like a lever. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you say, it'll be like a prop rod. It'll hold it up. Um, and there's lots of little details. Lots of gribbling, I see, and things like that, yeah. Like the skate, the skate pieces, the roller skates. I spent quite a while making the head. I'm just trying to perfect it and make it nice. Um, then in the chest here, there's another little minifig. And these uh -huh. minifigs are in there. <laughs> the little robots are insectoids. Yeah. They got those. These are chrome actuators from Chrome Block City. Uh, a friend of mine gave these to me. Those chrome actuators were initially supposed to be in the big robot, but they're they're in this they're built into this one now. Um, then I have a set of black ones in the back for the shoulders. Ah, those are normal size, right? And the chrome yeah, ones are the are big all... ones. Yeah. No, they're actually the regular ones as well. Ah, the regular. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Yeah, the large one. Um, these underneath here are actually the large ones. Ah, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I see, yeah. Those are really long. Yeah, so anytime I'm building with these... Point. Yeah. Yeah, anytime I'm building with these actuators, I have to consider that the middle of the throw is where I have to start with building it mm -hmm. so that it mm -hmm. has room to go forward, you have room to go back. So the nominal position would actually be where the throw is in the center. Um, same thing with the, with the head. You know, are those robot. flex axles? Oh, yeah, they're flex axles. Yes, yeah, flex cables... And a bionicle, extra slicer <laughs> yeah. head, slicer. Yeah, nice. <laughs> slicer, right? <laughs> yeah. My son says, uh, it looks like a bug. Why did you do that? He says, why did you put that on there? It looks like a bug. Because <laughs> it looks cool, right? <laughs> it has texture. So these are the old boat weights. Boat weights, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and inside of here is like a Technic turntable. Um, This whole mechanism pivots and twists ah so the weights center the tail or right what, so the so there's it's kind of hard to see a little bit maybe if i open this up there's shock absorber there mm -hmm. and a little bit of like a like a i don't, I don't know what you would call that some, something to move and flex with with the uh the cable sorry with the shock absorber but the Technic turntable is mounted in such a way so that as you move it, I guess it has like an elongation and the part is hanging down and the boat weights are matched onto it. So my idea is basically so that when the robot shifts its center of balance or it leans into a corner or it moves, the tail will adjust and keep the robot at least somewhat balanced. And I got to tell you, when I put on the head, after I built the body, and I put the head and built the tail and put the head and tail onto the robot, it dramatically increased the the balance. I was so so impressed with that, thinking about how naturally, you know, just just how beautiful it is, you know, elegant that animals have the, the balance like that with their tails. And until you actually build a model and see the dynamic forces and how it works, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, nature is a great teacher. Yes, for sure. And I tried I tried to like integrate that as best I could. I almost motorized that part just to kind of like have an extra ability to control it. Because I have one port motor port open on the 3.0. And that was dead that was going to be for the tail, but it became kind of I don't know, just it would have been too much. It'd have been too much. It would have been too bulky. 
and I'm trying to keep it streamlined. And I made this for you guys, for really. I really did. And Thank I made you. it because I wanted to build ahead. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. I, I want you guys to be successful. I really do. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so no pressure. It goes no for pressure. you also, right? I mean, what's that? I mean, yeah, I mean, the, this, I mean, the, we, we will come to the question section, right? But one of my yeah. questions will be, of course, I mean, it takes really, I mean, you, you have to really be a really, really love Lego on what you're doing because it takes really, I mean, I can just imagine how much effort it takes, right, to do all this. Oh my gosh, years. And, and also money just to, buy, just to buy the bricks, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I uh, purchased the, the main components for this, I purchased them, I, I bought them all at the same time from you guys. So I bought four mm -hmm. buoys 2.0, I bought the, the 3.0, and I bought four motors all at the same time. I, I thought you know, our models, you know, the Jerry builds are big, but, you know, yeah. Jerry will have to be, build something bigger. <laughs> I'm going to need a chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> my back is gonna pop out. <laughs> oh my gosh! I know. I, my will. fingertips. Forget about it. Like you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> like I, I didn't even want to put the thumb wheels behind the legs, like behind the feet. These little wheels back here. I, I only did that in order to ensure that it would be a lot more stable. You did a great job, regardless. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank Can't you so wait much. To see it in life. Oh, it's so much it's so much better in real life, especially the big robot too. Once you see the big robot, mm -hmm. oh, that thing is I don't even know. Uh, I mean <laughs> it, it looks scary. On my little phone screen it looks scary, right? <laughs> so like you said, you never enter your room uh, without turning the light on first, huh? <laughs> and my even then, you know, you, you never know when it's gonna jump on you. <laughs> uh, man, this thing it's pretty scary looking. You know, I, I built it to show what's possible. Yeah. And I built it to basically be a showcase of my ideas um, and what Technic is possible, what, what's possible with Technic. And there's a lot of system pieces in it, but it's all the same to me. It's still Lego. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And it's all, uh, so you, you're not using any kind of metal parts? No. Um, it is 100% Lego. It looks unreal right i mean it's so so huge yeah it's really 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 impressive oh man i'm so glad you guys get to see this i really appreciate it even if it doesn't yeah. look so great on camera i mean know. i'm glad that you're showing us all this i mean i'm really really appreciate it ah oh, coming here. from you guys Thank it means you. a lot uh oh, you're welcome jerry and you're welcome ronnie and, and and your whole team. Thank you.